guys so you can see I have a city scene which I brought up from my content browser and I have some trees arranged in this um, city so the reason why I'm having this is just to populate it and make it look more like city and all that so for us to do this effect this walkthrough effect virtual walkthrough effect you would want to first off go to a view which you want so let's say this is the view i want i want my actor or the player now to have this height not be higher than this height so that's the first thing you need to do go to that view set your camera view to that view then you go to your tool virtual walkthrough and virtual walkthrough so once i click on that then i can start hitting the combination keys and all that so what virtual walkthrough does is to make you the first player just like the game then you start moving your mouse so if i hit w on my key it moves forward if i hit d it comes to the right a to the left s backwards so then q will move my like i'm um darling oh sorry not darling like i am trying to tilt to look sideways and e will do the opposite so that's just the key combination so if i hit w and the, another combination is using your mouse your left mouse will allow you to do what the q and e will do but in this case you go in any direction not sideways so you can move up so what i'm doing is pressing down my left mouse button you can see a cross a cross a cross sign at the middle of the screen so that is my target where my view is going to so you can use this combination to walk and move so i'm pressing down my mouse and forward which is w to move so so let's assume i want to come to this side i can just come here and i can move and notice something that i'm trying to move across this but it's not allowing me to move and the reason is because walkthrough we create a collision between an object so you don't fall or you don't go through an object so and this is handy this is so nice because it actually recognizes that okay there is a geometry there and we are not meant to cross that and all that so but i'm going to show you how you can change that if you want to go across an object so this I can climb this bridge all that so if I want to come back I can just move my mouse then come back under the bridge so I can look through and move to wherever I want all right so let's see so let's look at some of the options here okay let's look at some of the options that we have here so if you I'm, i still have my walkthrough set then let's look at the option then the option you can the first option is the mode allows you to choose either you want a fly through fly by and um, tank mode now the fly through is just like person moving fly by can be used when you want to create maybe a plane moving so if i press down my w and i move up the plane flies up just like you are flying so sorry the wildly so you can use that to fly by so if your intention is to do an animation where you fly across the city and try to look over an area view the whole city so you can just do that I think I'm lost in my city, so I will come here. So that is that. That is for flyby. So I'm trying to bring back my screen. So you also have a tank control, just like your normal tank. See, you can already see that the movement is not as smooth as the normal movement so it works like that so if you want to go to the side you have to use the side if you are trying to use this um, mouse to move sideways it won't work see i'm still pressing w but it's going backwards because 
that is my front so now the tank is tilted backwards so if i want to move back i have to press s so it's just like a tank control i'm trying to turn but it's not going that way so i have to press d or a to move so everything is now tilted so just let you know that that is there then i'm going to go back to walk through then it resets everything to whatever i want okay so another thing is um let's go into the scale and threshold this is where you set the scale of the project so maybe the, the speed is too much or that or you are higher than the scene you can set your scale here the ratio of your project range and all that so maybe you want to use a fixed value then you can put the height of the person so let's assume i want the height to be 200 so i can see that this um the movement becomes faster and all that so you can also do so many things like look for the stair terrace threshold so you want to move up or stair falling and collision threshold then if you go to speed also you can set the speed of everything so let's say you want to set your mouse speed so the way your mouse move you can set that you can see the movement is now fast compared to if it's here can you see that the movement is slow and so you can work with all these things to make everything then you can also use your turn and movement so right now my movement is set high if i bring it down and i press w you see that my movement is very slow so maybe yours is this low at first you can just need to come to the speed go to the movement speed ratio increase that you can also set your acceleration zoom and all that so just to let you know that these are here so you can play around you also have record we'll get back to this record and hood nothing really here it's just to show what you want to show here so right now you have the cursors and all that anything you want to turn off you can just start turning them off so this is the direction compass all that so then you have the shortcut for the commands in the screen or in the walkthrough so you can look at the shortcut and work with them and you can set your own custom shortcut if you don't like that so just choose a look for a particular shortcut that you want select it and that works so let's go to the record what this record does is it allows you to record your movement so this is handy in the sense that let me move backwards so i want to try and do a recording where okay i'm here i think um okay let me just start the recording from here so for you to record your movement you can just come to this record click on the record button start so you can see a red button down here so that means your record has started so if i move i can start moving and seeing whatever movements i'm going through and once i am done with all this whatever i'm trying to record so i can't go through that once I am done, what I'm going to do is just stop the recording and all that. And as soon as I stop, you have this playback. So this will allow me to do a playback of whatever I've done. So you see the movements and all that. Then you also have the second pass recording rotation. So this works for only rotation. So if you want to do second pass, you can just click on the second pass, start recording. So as you're moving, this only record your rotation. That's the only thing it records. Uh, also records the movement actually, but the rotation is what this does. So once, I, so you can notice I'm having my play. So I'm not pressing anything. It's just the what I have recorded before is playing on. So I'm just changing the rotation. Rotation. So you can layer all these things and stop. So if I'm to play everything together, I have my first rotation plus the second one which I set. And all that and the thing about this if you come in and play you don't see anything the reason is because you only have that animation here so for you to bring up this animation to your timeline for render purpose because right now you can't render this except i you can't even keyframe this because there's no option for you to keyframe so for you to bring up this animation out there are three options here you have right record and all that 
and you have um, the right record movement into camera. So the difference between this is that this will create a camera and a spline and put the camera to move along the spline. So your spline will move across your movements. Then this one will add actual animation to your camera and will do keep framing things on that camera. So any option you want you can choose. So if I want this for instance, I can set the duration of the animation. Maybe I want to start from zero and end at maybe 200 frames. Once I'm done, I'm going to create a spline, then create a camera. So, so if we click on create ready camera, it creates this spline for us and also this. So we can scroll this up and play this animation. So you can already see the camera moving. So it creates all this and so you can go into the camera here and as you play see the movements of that camera that you have and it goes just to let you know that you can now start rendering this one because that you've transferred this animation from there <clears throat> all right but let's say we have these plans all deleted then back to our animation you can also use camera just click on this so you can do your interval time adjustment if it creates it creates camera and sets the time so this is the camera it has created if i select the camera you can see all the keyframes i have so that so i can play I have all this everything is recorded and all that so just to let you know that that is there so talking about the um let me go back to this talking about um what was i saying yeah i said something about um, i think i should just do this so um, all right so i said something about not being able to go through an object so if you see i want to go into this object as soon as i hit it stops i can't go through this object and the reason is because by default it creates a collision with this object so i cannot go into it i can't go into it. so for me to do that i have to select this object look for the object here that i want to go through so this is the object so i right click on the object Go to Cinema 4D tag, then go to Collision Detection. Then I'll select the Collision Detection. Make sure I have Enable Collision Detected not checked. So Enable Collision Detection. So that means this object, I've, since it's not enabled, that means I can go through this object. So if I go back into this virtual camera and I try to go into this objects you can see that we should go into it and i'm now inside the building and i can go out because it's still the same objects but any other objects i can't go through because i have not added a collision to it so for me to do that i have to add a collision to that object so that i can go through this object so i hope you understand that so let me go out of this because i think i'm lost in my city again so that is pretty much it um this is not a tutorial actually it's just a, a walkthrough and to let you know that that is there and you can also use that too talking about where you can use it you can have maybe a an architectural building you want to do a fly through or a walkthrough of the whole building you can use this walkthrough then transfer the animation into an actual camera movement then you render that out and the thing is it's smooth and it's clean you can decide to add collision to a particular object you don't want to collide you want to collide with or you don't want you want to go through an object add a collision detection tag and make sure you uncheck that um collision so you can go through the object so that can be done maybe you want to go through a door and all that so so i think this is pretty much it and 
if you have learned something or you know a better way to work on this, please, I would really appreciate if you can also put that in the description section so we can all learn together. And um, like I said, I'm starting a, a modeling tutorial series very soon. And if uh, a, a viewer asks me to do product designs and all that from start starting from the modeling process to texturing and all that so i want you guys to anticipate that and if you are a new subscriber please subscribe so that you can see this tutorial as it drops so hit the bell button so that every time i upload this video you have a notification of it and i'm hoping to start this tutorial next week and i think that is it so do have a wonderful day and god bless you bye